How do and welcome back to Morrigan's Creations. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I turn this plain old base into a rugged and crystal covered one for my rock gut trogoth. <laughs> I've made a fair few bases in my time, and in some cases, I've had people asking how to make them. So I thought I'd go ahead and make this video. I must go on and say that I do this for mainly visual reasons and you shouldn't really be altering the base to make any changes to lines of sight, anything like that. To begin I usually start with a layer of cork floor tile. In this case I am drawing around the smaller diameter of the base to ensure that it stays somewhat flush. The tile that I am using is actually quite thin so I'm going to build this up in a few layers. One of the main benefits of using cork floor tile is that it is pretty easy to rip and tear it into your desired shape. Before you do commit too early on in the process I do recommend dry fitting your model on it to make sure there is enough room for it to stand. Typically I do like to mark the areas where the feet are so that I don't risk building in that area. As you can see here in this clip, I am actually using regular kitchen scissors to cut away at this cork, and that's because I didn't want to risk blunting my knife. Little did I know that my knife was about as sharp as me in a maths test. Cork is actually a pretty absorbent material, so anywhere that this didn't stick, I simply applied more super glue. I was starting to like how this base was beginning to look. However, I wasn't too sure about the area behind where the Trogoth would be standing, so I decided that I would build up this area a little more with some more cork. If there's one thing that me and you have in common, and it's probably you have a big pile of sprues lying around. Instead of just throwing these away, I'm going to go and cut them into shape and shave them down to make some crystals. I then began shaving away at one end of the sprue to make it into a point. Whilst I'm making these cuts, I'm trying to ensure that my blade stays straight, as this is going to give us the desired effect and give the crystal its many faces. These were then attached to the base with some more regular super glue. If you want to make any larger nodes, you can go ahead and cut up multiple bits of sprue and you're going to utilize that flat surface on the back and stick them together. I recommend using some plastic cement such as Tamiya Ultra Thin or anything along those lines. This is going to make sure that they stick together completely by melting the two pieces together. Here's an example of a node that I made in this way. For the actual ground cover, I applied a generous layer of tacky glue. And I just spread this around on the base using a synthetic brush. You could substitute this for any old school glue, just regular PVA. Then I simply went ahead and I sprinkled on some dirt from outside. I did make sure that I'd heated this dirt up a little bit just to kill any bacteria still living in it. After I tapped off the excess, I then went in and added a layer of more CA glue. Normally I would go ahead and water down some PVA glue and spray on some isopropyl alcohol, but in this case I wanted this to be done a little bit quicker so CA glue worked fine. I added a bit more tacky glue to the uncovered area of the base and I sprinkled on some mixed grit sand. I did this because I wanted a variety of sizes within the stones featured on the base. Once again, this was fixed in place with more CA glue. After priming everything up, this is how it looked. If you want to see me paint up this model and this base in an upcoming video, please don't forget to let me know in the comments. I want to say a very special thank you to my Patreon member, David Prido and everybody who has subscribed to me over the last two years. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.